Howdy everybody, Farmer Luke saying welcome back here to another week of Resilience Growing which this week we're going to focus on uh, growing seedlings for your hydroponic and your wicking bed setup which you've been making over the last few weeks and now you've, we've touched on this previously with the charred seedlings that we did a few weeks ago um, in order to get ready for the hydroponic set and we're going to continue that now with the rest of the seeds that are in your kit and we're going to use some items that you've used previously and also some items that I've scavenged from around the house. So what we have here is one of the half trays. Now you may have seeded some peas in these before. This is also the same size tray I used in the charred seeding video. So the key for this one is just to fill the soil up to about that first little raised lip around the edge there. Again, you've done this previously in the last video. And over here I have a little um, egg carton and a like a punnet of cherry tomatoes, a container from that. Again, sort of continuing that theme of upcycling from items we have around the house and, and stopping things from going to landfill and out with your waste. I've just sort of rescued these out of the bin, um, given them a little wash and I've filled them up with some seed raising mix as well. So that's probably the first step for all three of these. You want to use that seed raising mix that I've uh, showed on previous videos. The importance of the seed raising mix is that it's a bit thinner than normal potting soil and allows those uh, those seeds that are germinating, allows the very kind of delicate roots to easily sort of get through the soil and start to um, establish themselves. So what you want to do, get yourself a container, either the half tray or just use something from around the house. You can use a full tray if you wish, if that's what you've got left behind. It doesn't really matter. The point is just to sort of make use of what you've got. Now the seeds we're using, the chard you've seen before, the coriander you've seen before as well, which we've done as a microgreen, we're going to continue that as a sort of a full sort of um, herb sort of growing this time. We're going to see, use the lettuce as well and the parsley that's in your kit. Now these seeds are a lot finer than the other two. And then we've got the chard, which you should remember from last time, and the coriander. But the, the goal for the coriander this time is actually to grow the kind of the fully established herb and then be able to plant it out into our wicking bed or into the hydroponic unit. Now the sort of the only rule, golden rule with planting seeds is you want to plant about two times the, the depth as the width of the seed. So if the seed, like the chard, is quite big, it's about sort of four, three to four millimeters wide, you wanna plant it about sort of that um, six to eight millimeters deep and, and similar with the coriander, um, basically twice the width of the seed is kind of the golden ratio, if you will, of, of planting most seed types. Now it will vary um, with other certain types of plants, but for what I've got today, it'll work perfect. Now the lettuce and the parsley, as you'll see when you open them up, are quite small seeds. Um, and they can basically just be scattered across the surface of the soil and just be kind of lightly sort of almost like pressed in, patted in and, and kind of just have a little bit of soil sort of sprinkled over the top. But they don't really need to be buried or kind of dug down into the soil and covered over because they are so so fine and they are uh, do require a little bit more light to germinate. So what I'm going to do here, I'm probably going to focus the chard and the coriander on this larger one because it is a bit deeper. And I'm going to do the parsley and the lettuce and these other two containers. So it's pretty simple. Um, you know, you've seen it before, but I'll just demonstrate again. So with, with the chard, again, these seeds are quite big, as you'll see here in the close-up. Um, they're you know, quite a few mil apart, some almost sort of five millimeters or so. Um, the main thing here is just to plant them so there's enough room for them to establish themselves as, as uh, little seedlings. So again, I'm just gonna kind of press them down and cover them over. Um, the point here is that we're not growing these for microgreens, remember, we're growing these to be like sort of fully fledged seedlings that eventually grow into the, the full size uh, vegetable, you know, leafy green that this plant wants to become. Um, so we need to plant them in a way that leaves enough um, enough area for the roots and the plant to develop so that it will survive transplanting. And transplanting is when we will eventually take the, the healthily grown seedlings out of these little soil raising mixes and put them into the hydroponic unit or the wicking bed proper where they'll be able to grow up and sort of become a big healthy plant. So I'm doing a line of chard here and I'm going to do probably uh, some coriander on the other side and because I want these to be quite big. So for this little area I'm just going to do probably like a line of chard there and a line of coriander there and that will be it for that that uh, that raising mix there. And with the lettuce and the parsley, I just want to show you sort of how small some of them can be. So this lettuce variety, yeah, again, it's pretty small on camera there. This just really needs to be pressed sort of just under the soil. Um, so I'm just going to put that in there and I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. So I'm just going to get them on there first. I'm just going to do one per Little, um, little egg egg space, I guess you call it here in the, in the carton. Um, again, you could, if you wanted to, if you've got enough, you could do two. 
um, and then sort of choose the, the healthiest one at the end. Seed raising is sort of survival of the fittest. Not all of these will germinate perfectly and that's okay. That's why we raise more than we'll actually need. So with the uh, egg carton one here, I've got the lettuce seeds. Yeah, it's gonna sort of push them down. These are only about, um, like about sort of three millimeters wide. So they only need to go down like about half a mil. So I'm just gonna press them there under the soil. Again, you can use a little paddle pop so you can dig a little hole if you want. But this soil's pretty loose and thin because of this seed raising mix, so it's quite easy just to pop it down like that. So they, basically, you just want to make sure you can't see the seed anymore. Make sure there's a bit of a few mils of soil over the top with the lettuce. Pretty happy with that. Now the parsley is very, very small, and this is literally will just be a little scatter of the seeds. So again, we'll, yeah, we'll try to sort of make it show up in the camera, but it almost looks like you know the chaff from the another seed, but this is actually parsley. Um, so it's very, very small there. So with this, I'm just going to sprinkle it over um, the, um, the soil here and sort of, you can be pretty generous because again, it's about survival of the fittest. So we don't, it doesn't matter if we have lots sort of start to germinate because some of them will be better than others. So with them sort of covering the soil there, I'm just going to basically press them in. I'm not really like getting more soil and covering it over. The whole point here is that the seed just needs to make nice contact with the soil. So it knows that it's in the soil now and it's time to germinate and the moisture from the soil or the seed raising mix will start to sort of break down that seed. And I'm pretty happy with that. So you can obviously still see little bits of the parsley seeds. That's fine because they've all been pressed into the soil. So they're kind of like half buried, if you will. Now, once you've done all that, really you just got to make sure it's all moist and wet. So I'm going to use a spray bottle for the parsley because I don't really want to overwater it too much. Same for the lettuce as well. Um, I just want to kind of moisten that first kind of couple of top meals of the soil. But for the chard and the coriander, I will use my little watering can and just go along. And again, you just want to be nice and gentle. You don't want to like kind of flood it. And just you want to get that soil nice and moist um, just to keep the seeds moist and make sure it kind of stays through, goes all the way through the soil. Again, if you're sort of not happy with the coverage, you can quickly go over the top and just hit all those last little bits as well. So that's pretty much it for seeding, um, basically for seeding the these little seeds to make um, uh, seedlings to grow in our wicking beds and our hydroponic units. It's, it's a bit different to the, the microgreen style of things, uh, but the same principles apply. You need to keep it moist, you need to give it a little bit of light and a bit of warmth, um, and that will, they're all the conditions that seeds need to germinate. Now with this, you're not gonna see those first stages of growth because with the microgreens, you'll see it on the hemp mat as it's growing, whereas this is gonna be happening under the soil. So don't be discouraged if you don't see much action for the first sort of few days because if stuff is happening underneath the soil, it will generally be at least a couple of weeks until you start to see some kind of little sprouts emerge from the from the soil itself. Definitely with the coriander, it can take two to three weeks to germinate. Um, the lettuce and the parsley, you'll start to see some action after about a week or so. Um, but the key for this is you want to um, give it time for these seedlings to grow. Now we'll detail some of the time frames and what to do in the fact sheet as well. And I'll also probably slice in a little photo of the wicking bed that I've set up a couple of weeks ago. Some of the seedlings that are in there and sort of how big and healthy they're looking. And just give you an idea of the, the size that you'll be looking for before you want to transplant these seedlings into the bigger growing uh, areas. So hopefully that's been pretty uh, self-explanatory and, and nice and easy to follow along. Um, again, any questions, jump into the, the Facebook group and um, we can answer those questions there all in the Zoom sessions on Thursday nights. But hopefully you've got all the tools you need now and some of the experience to grow yourself some nice, uh, happy seedlings. So um, until then, I've been Farmer Luke saying happy growing and we'll see you on the farm next time.